All right, so copy your box one more time. And this one is going to be called Rotate Collide. And actually I'm going to set this a little offset for an example. And also making a sphere here. And making sure that sphere is at the same depth ratio as the other ones. So this is not, and I could probably zero it out if I wanted to. Zero, zero. There we go. So if I move it over and move it above, like that. The idea here is when this ball hits this crate, it will start the rotation. Okay, very simple. So in order to do that also, I need this one to become a rigid body. That way it's, it suffers from gravity. So that's under this, physics, rigid body. So just hit play to try that out. Pop. Okay. And if you want to play around with materials and stuff like that, here's the mesh collider material. You notice the mesh collider material says physics material none. So if I wanted to, I could put bouncy on there. And if I hit play, it now bounces. So now, any time that it hits, it should start it. And if I really wanted to get savvy about it, I could probably write it so when it doesn't hit like that, or hits it again, it would stop it. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna show you how to code the actual um, start mechanism. I think that would get a little too complex for a project two lesson, okay? So what code should I start out with? I will answer that question momentarily. What code should I copy paste from? And I would say uh, the last one that you did would be fine. So what we did is the GUI button. Let's just take that one and reveal it in Finder and make a duplicate out, but so duplicate. And rename it Clot. All right, so in this case, I don't need a GUI interface. So I'll get rid of that example. And I need a new function though. So now think of a function as something that I do. You know what I mean? I function update handles every frame. Uh, function on GUI is something where if I touch a GUI interface, it goes into play. Now a function collide is something that happens, it just, something happens like collide. Therefore, a function just starts a new process over, whether it be based upon frame rate or something that happens or something that I do. That's pretty broad, right? Oh, well, you know, hopefully you get that. So on collision, enter. And in this case, there's going to be a collision. And that collision is actually a variable called collision. Make sure you capitalize collision in that case. What happens? Well, when it collides, what happens? Speed equals 200. Very simple. So play around with stuff like that. You know what I mean? Just keep it very simple. Affect a variable. And then after that, get really good at it. And then you can start affecting more and more variables and pulling variables across different projects, different game objects, and different scripts. Save this. Hit play, let's see what happens. Boom, boom, but no um, actual rotation. Make sure I get everything. OK, 
Okay. Make sure I got that script on there. Duh. Let's see here. Sometimes the stupidest small things. Oh, there we go. Perfect. So that is how you affect Clyde. Now that's no fun. That's just a ball bouncing. You know what we really need is a cannon. That's what we need. So we're going to start getting a little higher into the next project where we script a cannon that shoots. And we'll just use this project as an example on how to start that rotation. So this ends project two, the transform uh, node and how to affect it in many different ways across many different variables. In the next project, I'm going to script a little gun that shoots and hits this. And you're going to start getting into physics and rigid bodies and how to use spawn points.